In today's video, we're going to talk about automatic differentiation in TensorFlow and Keras. Automatic differentiation is a key concept in machine learning, particularly in the context of training new neural networks and deep learning models. TensorFlow, along with its high-level API Keras, provides a powerful tool for automatic differentiation called gradient tape. So why do we need gradient tape? When you are training a neural network, like the one that you can see here, you need to compute gradients of the loss function with respect to the model parameters to update them using uh, gradient descent or its variance. In this case, you can see that we have this input layer where we have three input features, and then this intermediate or hidden layer where we have two nodes or two units, and then the uh, final layer, which has only one uh, node or output. And in this case, you can see that going from the hidden layer to the final layer, we have to find this weighted sum or combination. Uh, and you can see in this case that we have these weights or parameters, W21 and W22, and B2 if you want to consider the bias term that we don't know and we have to find optimal values for them. And how do you find optimal values for them? Usually you need to know the ground truth outputs. That's why we need to work with labeled data sets. And we try to minimize the distance between what our network produces, which is here A2, and the ground truth knowledge about that uh, particular input that we have. And the idea is that now we have to find these derivatives or gradients with respect to these weights or parameters to be able to train this model. So that's the motivation behind uh, finding gradients and automatic differentiation, where the goal is to be able to do this in an automatic or automated way rather than doing this manually. So the way that gradient tape works is like a recording mechanism that watches the operations executed inside its context. And this means that during the forward pass, meaning that when we're going from the beginning of this network to the uh, end of this network, gradient tape records the operations. And then once the forward pass is completed, now you can call this gradient tape and ask for computing gradients. So it's a very nice and straightforward concept. And in order to understand this, let's start by looking at a very simple case. In this case, let's say you have this network where the output, which is this F, is three times U plus five times V, right? So U and V are the nodes that are right behind this uh, node F. And we know the, 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 the connection or the relationship between them. And U by itself depends on another node, which is this X is two times X. And V is combination of X and Y. So it is, uh, these two weights are both equals to one. They are both equal to one. So in this case, if you want to find these derivatives uh, of F with respect to X and Y, what thing that we can do is to find the paths that we have between these two nodes, right? So how can you get from F to X? So we have this upper path and this lower path. And so the upper path is going from F to U, U to X, and then the lower path is from F to V and then V to X. So this is a very clear and simple example of chain rule uh, in calculus. And in this case, you can find these partial derivatives and do the math. So you can see that we get three times two, which is six, and then five for the lower path, which is 11, this, this derivative. And we can do the same thing for f with respect to y, the derivative of f with respect to y, and there's only one path here, right? Because there's no path between u and y, so that's why we only have one path, which is this green one. And here you can see that we get this five. So the question that we want to answer here is that can TensorFlow automatically find these uh, derivatives for us, as long as we can just give the forward pass, which is the first line that we have here. So we are going to start by importing TensorFlow as TF. Uh, that's a very uh, common thing to do, to import TensorFlow as TF. We can import this as any other name that you want, but that's what we're going to use here. Then you define the function that you have, this F, which is three times U plus five times V. That's what this function returns. 
Now we have to define X and Y. So in this case, we use tf.constant, right? And we assign these values to X and Y. And so the main part here is this statement that we have here, which is this with a statement. So with tf.gradient tape, and we want to make sure that this option, which is persistent, is set to true. And I'm going to talk about this very soon. And then we, we use as tape. So with tf.gradient tape, we use this name tape. And so now we have Python indentation. So what this means is that everything that we have here is inside this with a statement, which means that now gradient tape is watching for all these operations. So one thing that we need to do at the very beginning is to make sure that we are watching what uh, sort of variables we want to compute gradients with respect to them. So we know that at the end, we want to find the partial derivative of uh, f with respect to x and y, and so that's why we're using tape.watch, right? So we are telling gradient tape that watch these variables uh, because I want to do some operations on them. I'm, I'm going to ask you to find these derivatives or, or gradients at the end, right? So that's what we are using here. And after this, you just need to define your forward pass, right? So we know that if we have X, we can multiply this by two and we get U and then we can add X and Y and we get we. And you can see that that's exactly what we have here, both in the graph and both in the uh, and in the in the sort of like equations that we have here. And then finally, we're saying that the result, which is this f, is uh, this function of u and v that, that we have defined here. So we could have done this directly inside this with a statement too. But that's the very nice thing. So once you define this gradient tape, now you can use this uh, method tape.gradient to find the derivative of result with respect to x and y. And so if we do this here, you can see that now we will automatically get the correct results. So the, the derivative with respect to x is 11, and then the derivative with respect to y is 5. And this is as expected. So this gives you a very nice overview of how gradient tape works. You need to tell gradient tape what to watch for and what operations you are performing. And then at the end, you can use tape.gradient and this will uh, find uh, the, the gradients or derivatives effortlessly. And as I remember, remember I said that I, I will talk about persistence. So what is this persistent? So you need to set persistent to be true to be able to find multiple gradient computations in the same tape. So if you look at it here, we are finding in this case, uh, the, the derivative or gradient with respect to X and Y. So because of that, we need to make sure that we set the persistent to be true. If you know that uh, you want to do only one, use one of these tape that gradient that you have here, um, then you don't really have to um, set that to be too true. Uh, but in this case, we did that. Otherwise, we, we run into some problems. So now let's look at a, an example, which is more related to neural networks and deep learning, right? So again, we import TensorFlow as TF. And let's say here we generate a training data set, which is very simple. The inputs of your network um, are one, two, three, four. And then the outputs, uh, based on the ground truth knowledge that we have from the training data set, they should be two, four, six, and eight, right? So in this case, obviously we know that, you know, this is a very simple uh, neural network uh, where we only have to multiply each input by two and we get, you know, the, the perfect uh, result that, 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 that uh, is which is consistent with the training data set that we have. So in this case, what you need to do is that our neural network has one weight or parameter. And here, instead of using tf.constant, I'm using tf.variable. If you know that already, you want to define this variable that you need to learn or optimize later, um, you can directly use this instead of tf.constant um, that, that we used before. So that's why here we use tf.variable. And we assign the value of 1, right? So this is the slope of the line that we have. Um, and again, the idea is that you start with some random guess, and now we want to find these gradients and use gradient descent to make this 
uh, more reasonable given the data that we have or adapted to our data set. So next, you have to define the forward pass, which is very easy. You, you get X, which is your input. You multiply by W, which is this uh, weight or connection in your network, and this should give you the output, right? So that's your forward pass, this part. And next, you need to define your loss function. So the loss function measures how good or bad this uh, prediction is. And in this case, we can use the uh, standard mean squared error, which is uh, subtracting the, the predicted and true values, finding the, uh, the, the score of this value, and then finding the average across all uh, predictions that, that we have. So that's why we use tf.square and tf.reduce underscore mean. So we, we are using built-in TensorFlow uh, operations here. And next, you need to have a training loop uh, where here, because you're using gradient descent, we have a learning rate or a step size and the number of epochs, meaning that how many times we want to update this uh, weight parameter W. And then we have this for loop here that for epoch in range of epochs. So for in each epoch, we need to be able to find this gradient of the loss with respect to the weight that we have. And so the forward pass is the linear regression here, and then you compute the loss. And so remember this y pred here depends on w, right? Because that w appears inside this function. And so now after you write this uh, with tf.gradient tape as tape, right? So now you can use tape.gradient and find the gradient of loss with respect to w and we know from uh, gradient descent that we can update W by subtracting. So that's why this assign underscore sub of learning rate or step size times gradient, right? So this means that we multiply this gradient by step size, and then we use a negative sign. And that's how we update um, this uh, weight parameter W here. And now in order to show how this works, we're gonna print some useful information. You can see that here we are saying that uh, for all the epochs where the, the, the remainder, uh, when we divide by 10 um, is zero, uh, we want to print the epoch number. So this would be like zero, 10, 20, you know, up to when you get to 90 here. And uh, we want to look at the value of the loss function. That's what we want to minimize and then the value of W. So we are using here dot numpy because these are tensors because we are in TensorFlow. But then you say dot numpy, you will be able to easily see the values that are inside these tensors. And obviously we're gonna plot the final value of W2, right? So in this case, you can see that at the beginning, the loss function, uh, the value that we have was 7.5, which is arguably uh, a, high, a large number. And then the weight was like one point uh, 14, right, which is very far from two, which we know that is the optimal solution in this case. And then you can see that as, for example, here, uh, you know, we increase the number of epochs or meaning that we have more updates, we are decreasing the value of the loss function, right? Um, and then the weight is getting closer and closer to two, right? So this is really very close to uh, the optimal value, which is um, two. So this tells you, that in this case, we didn't have to manually find the, the, the gradient of the loss function with respect to W, and we can just use this uh, tape.gradient. I hope you find this video helpful, and please don't forget to like and subscribe.